Hello to all our beautiful friends out there. First, we kindly ask you to like this video. It helps more than you might realize in getting this message out to others. And second, we hope you're all having an amazing weekend. Now, today's topic is a bit longer, but it's definitely worth it if you've been having trouble identifying the ego. So let's dive in. We saw a comment this week that asked a really great question. What's the difference between the ego and the higher self, and how can we tell them apart? We thought it would be helpful to share our thoughts on this, and hopefully, it'll give you some clarity. Think of it like this. When we talk about the ego, we're really talking about the part of you that identifies as you, your sense of self. Your higher self, on the other hand, is the eternal part of you that's connected to source energy, expressing itself through your life here and now. Then there's the persona you identify with, whether it's Tom, Julie, or whoever. That's what we often refer to as the I, which is your ego. It's the part of you that defines who you are and separates you from others. But it's a temporary identity that your higher self is experiencing in this lifetime. The ego tends to focus on separation, while your higher self embraces unity and oneness. But here's the thing. Before you start thinking about getting rid of your ego, remember that both have a role to play in your journey. You might be wondering, wait, are you saying my higher self created my ego? Not exactly. What we're saying is, when a child is born, they don't have any awareness of themselves yet. The first thing they do is learn about other, and that's when they start forming a sense of self based on how the adults around them, like their parents, see them. What mom or dad thinks about the child begins to shape the child's idea of who am I? and that's where the ego starts to develop. In other words, the ego is an accumulated identity, a combination of your self-concept, your personality, and other people's opinions of you. Essentially, their opinions become your opinions. The ego is mainly focused on survival. It wants to separate itself from everything that's other, so, why was the ego created in the first place? Well, when Source, or your higher self, wanted to know, what am I? It could only understand oneness by first experiencing separateness. And that's what the ego is, that sense of separateness. It's like how you can only understand what's real by recognizing what's false, or how you know light by understanding darkness. So, the ego is a tool created by Source to help it understand itself. It's important not to see the ego as an enemy because it's just a perspective, a practice of experiencing separateness. That's what you intended when you came into this life. So be careful about videos that talk about getting rid of the ego. It's not in your best interest to do that. We're not trying to make an enemy out of the ego any more than we would make an enemy out of physical life. Your higher self intended for you to come here and experience individuality, and the ego is a necessary part of that. The problem comes when the ego, which is meant to be a tool, ends up controlling you instead of you controlling it. As beings in human form, we've gotten so caught up in our physical senses that we've lost touch with our greater, eternal self. Because of this, the ego has taken over and is driving the ship. It's so focused on survival that it's even influenced physical evolution, like how the fight-or-flight response developed to protect our sense of identity. While the ego helps keep us alive long enough to learn and experience life in this physical world, it's also what gets in the way of our spiritual growth. The ego feeds off fear, anxiety, resentment, judgment, and all sorts of attachments. It thrives on resistance. And because of that, the ego ends up controlling the very person it's supposed to serve. You. So, when we talk about spirituality and connecting with the higher self, it's really important to learn how to separate the ego's voice from intuition, which is the voice of your higher self. 
Even when you're aware of your ego, that awareness alone means you've stepped outside of it. You're no longer living in the ego, you're your eternal self, watching the ego at work. Once you can tell the difference between the ego's voice and your intuition, the goal is to not give in to the ego's urges. Instead, trust and follow the voice of your intuition. Doing this takes power away from the ego and puts you back in control. Now you might be asking, how do I tell the difference between the voice of the ego and the voice of intuition? The simplest way to distinguish them is to know that your higher self will never impose its will on your choices. The voice of intuition is quiet, subtle, and peaceful. It's often the first thing that comes to mind, and it doesn't come with any emotional baggage. The ego, on the other hand, is aware of its decision-making power and isn't hesitant to assert it. It often speaks loudly and urgently, trying to control the situation. It'll say things like, you better do this right now, or something bad will happen. It's usually full of fear, judgment, or criticism. These are all ways the ego tries to maintain control. Remember, the higher self doesn't question your worth. It sees the world in a horizontal way, where everyone is equal. The ego, however, sees the world vertically, where you're either better or worse than others. It swings between pride and shame, always trying to avoid pain and chase pleasure. The ego lives in duality, which is why it's rarely in the present moment. The present moment is where your higher self resides. So, how do you strengthen your connection with your higher self? There's an old saying, seek and you shall find. And this rings true when it comes to reconnecting with your eternal self. Start asking questions like, who am I really? Who is living this life? One of the best ways to help this process is to create stillness in your life. It's in stillness that the voice of intuition really shines through. You can find stillness through meditation, quiet introspection, or spending time in nature, which is our favorite. You have to train your mind to focus gently, to be open to receiving. Meditation is one of the best ways to do this in our opinion. It's a gradual process, but spiritual growth often happens in small steps. Over time, you'll begin to let go of the ego's need to separate yourself from others, to compete, to be right, or to be superior. These desires are all functions of the ego. The ego thrives on need. Need comes from a place of lack, which is why it feels so desperate. Whenever you feel a strong need for something, it's usually your ego trying to convince you that you're not enough and that you need more to justify your existence. To counter this, start practicing self-love. A simple way to do this is by asking yourself throughout the day, what would someone who loves themselves do? You'll find that the answer is rarely in line with what the ego wants, because the ego is more concerned with pleasing others or meeting societal expectations. Remember, the story of your life, your achievements and mistakes, are just experiences. They don't define who you are. They're just things your eternal self has experienced in this lifetime, and they add to your growth. But they're not you. Until you can disidentify with your life story, the ego will continue to have control. Learning to be in the present moment helps you reconnect with your higher self, and it can be as simple as stopping for a few minutes to just breathe and be. It's tough at first because the ego likes to live in the past or the future, but you can train your mind to stay present. For example, if you're folding laundry instead of letting your mind wander to what happened today or what you need to do tomorrow, focus on the feeling of the soft fabric in your hands, the textures, the warmth. This simple practice helps retrain your mind to stay in the now. Learn to recognize whether your actions are driven by a negative emotion, which comes from the ego, or by inspiration, which comes from your higher self. The ego's urges come from fear and desire for control, while inspiration comes from a place of peace and positive emotion. Understanding the difference between your higher self and the ego is key to self-discovery and growth. Your higher self guides you with love, 
compassion and wisdom, while the ego often speaks from fear and insecurity. You can't fight or kill the ego, it's a part of you. But by becoming aware of it, you take a step away from it, and it loosens its grip. The more you learn to follow your higher self, the more you'll live in alignment with your true nature and find happiness in your day-to-day -day life. So that's our take on the difference between the higher self and the ego. The more you can free yourself from the ego's control and use it as a tool instead, the more you'll grow both spiritually and personally. Trust in your higher self, listen to your intuition, and always approach yourself with kindness and understanding as you navigate these two parts within you. Remember we love you all. Walk in light. Until next time, my friends, I ask all people everywhere to plant seeds of love, peace, joy, and oneness.